Welcome to NetTouch. In this lesson, we're going to be talking about combining PHP unit and Selenium. And luckily, PHP unit makes this really easy. So before we can get started with testing, we of course need to get everything set up. So I'm going to assume that you have PHP unit installed, but if you don't, it's really easy. Just go to the PHP unit homepage, click on installing, and as of the most recent release, 3.7, there's three different ways you can install it. You can install it through Pair. You can install it officially through Composer now, which is a recent addition. And you can also install it through a PHP archive, which is more of a one-click solution. And if you're not as friendly on the command line, that would be an easy choice to go. All right, so once you have PHP unit installed, you can confirm it by running PHP unit, and it should display a list of all of the options. But now we want to use Selenium, and that's an extension that we need to have set up. So once again, go to the PHP unit manual. You're going to go to chapter 17, which you can find in the sidebar. And if you're not familiar with Selenium, it gives us a really easy way to automate the user interface. So this makes it really helpful for, uh, for example, user acceptance tests, where maybe somebody says, I need you to build me a report so that I can blah, blah, blah. Well, Selenium is a tool that can help us with things like that. So how do we install it? Well, the first thing that you need to do is get Selenium Server set up. So we will click on this link, and that should take you to this seleniumhq.org page, and just download the most recent version of Selenium Server. So once you've downloaded this, you're going to want to move it to your bin. So let me browse to my desktop, and we're going to move the selenium.jar file that we just downloaded, and we will move this into our bin, like so. Great. And now if I turn off transparency, we can access it by doing java-jar and then the path to the file. Local bin, selenium, and we run it, and now we have a selenium server up and running. I'm going to hit control c to exit out of that, and why don't we create an alias for this. So I'm going to edit my zshrc. For you, you might want to just edit your bash profile or something similar. So I'm going to scroll down and just create a quick alias which I've already done. Alias Selenium equals that command that we just ran. And then I will exit out of it and restart or create a new tab. And now, if I zoom in, I can run Selenium and that will immediately start it up. Great. So once you have Selenium up and running, we now need to install the necessary extension. If we come back to the browser, we can see now we need to install the Selenium package. So we can do that through Pair. If you don't have Pair set up, just go ahead and do it. You can go to their website and it's fairly quick. So once again, I bring this back up. I'll create a new tab and we will run Pair install PHP unit slash PHP unit underscore Selenium. And that's it. Now you're ready to go. So let's bring up Sublime and write our first test. We will say test login dot PHP. And I'll zoom in just a few clicks. And now we'll create our class. Class test login, and that's going to extend PHP unit extensions. And we want to reference the Selenium 2 test case extension that we just installed through Pair. All right, so now before we can get started, we need to run our setup. So function setup, and within here we need to set, for example, the host and the browser and the port. So we'll say this set host, and we're going to be working with our local host. We'll say set the port. We're going to run on port 4444, which is pretty standard. And next, what is the browser that we're going to use to run these tests? We'll set it to Firefox. Finally, what is the URL that we want to start with? That way, from our methods, we can use relative URLs. So this is sort of like the base URL. This set browser URL, and we're going to set that to localhost.com slash, and the name of our project is Selenium Tut, or the name of the folder. And that's it. All right, so let's run this and see how we're doing. I'm going to browse into sites slash selenium tut. I'll zoom in just a few clicks. And now if I run PHP unit on test login.php, it does run and it lets us know, hey, you don't have any tests to execute. So let's consider our user story. They need a way to log into a website so they can access private information, something like that. So how would we go about implementing this? Well, we're not going to do it entirely. I'm just going to show you the basic ideas. Well, first, you would need to divide it up and figure out, are each of these steps small enough that they can be grouped together into one story? Or would we need to create multiple stories? For example, we could create the login form and set up that functionality. But what about, for example, the database layer? 
Well, maybe that would need to be in its own story. But nonetheless, we're just going to go through the basic process so that you can see how would we ensure that a forgot password link is there, or how would we add values to an input, things like that. So let's do our first function. Well, why don't we say the first function should be that there is a login form. So we'll say test has login form. We will begin by setting the URL. So what's the URL we're going to be working with for this method? Well, we'll just call it index.php. What I'll do now is search through that page. So we're going to use a name selector, and we're going to say find the input that has a name of username. And before I continue, I just realized I set that to the string 4444, but that should be an integer. All right, let's continue on. I will duplicate this, and we also want to look for password. Now, really, this should be enough without doing an assertion, but uh, let's be official, and we'll say assert equals, and we're going to assert that the username value should be an empty string. Or if you want a default value or something like that, you would set that up there. And we'll do the exact same thing here. All right, so let's run this. Now, what you're going to find is with Selenium, it's not like running unit tests. It's going to take longer than you would expect, and that's because it's actually running it within the browser. So here we can see it did fail, unable to locate element with a name of username. Okay, well, of course it can't do that because we don't have an index.php file. So let's create that now. I will paste in some HTML here. And within here, let's create our form. So we will begin with an input, which is text, the name is username, and the ID is username as well. Next, I will copy this, and then we will do another one for the password. Let's run it again. Give it just a couple seconds. Notice that it boots up Firefox. Now that's failing, but it shouldn't. If we run that one more time, take a look. It opens up Firefox, and it looks like I accidentally did localhost.com. Sorry about that. Let's remove that and try it one more time. It brings up Firefox. So it's sort of like this automated robot that will do all of the work for you. And now it's passing. Great. Now let's also create a function and we'll say test login form submits to admin. So when it submits, it's going to submit to admin.php. So once again, we set the URL. You're probably going to do this with each method. So what I want to do is make sure that this form is set to submit to admin.php, and then I'm manually going to ensure that that's the case. So check this out. We will do this, and now we're going to hunt down the form, and we're going to use a CSS selector to do that. So let's say this by CSS selector form, and then I'm going to get the attribute action. So we'll set that to action, and we'll say assert equals that this should be admin.php, and we'll check what the action is. All right, so let's leave it like that and run it one more time. It's going to bring up Firefox, and it is going to fail because it failed asserting that admin.php, but what it actually got was an empty string, and that's because it is set to an empty string. So now we're going to set that to admin.php, and then we're going to continue on and do just a little bit of manual testing. We're going to fill in those inputs and click on the submit button the way a user would. So we will do this by name. You could also do by ID as well. We'll stick with my name for now. And we will set that value to my username. And we'll do the same thing for the password. And we'll set that to 1234. So now when we run this, it's actually going to fill in those inputs with those values. And now I need a way to say click on the submit button. We'll go ahead and add that on right now. Submit, value, login. So how can I tell Selenium that I want to click on this button? Well, there's a couple ways. The easiest way would be this, click on element, or another way would be to submit the form. So we could say this by CSS selector, but we've already tracked down the form. So why don't we store that within a variable? Form, like so. And now we can say, get rid of all of this, and say form attribute. Now that we have that, I can just say form submit. Pretty easy. So we track down the form. We first do one test, and you could put this in its own test if you wanted, but I don't think it's necessary here. So we're going to make sure that the action is set, and then we're going to manually submit that form. And now once the user logs in, and by the way, we're not going to write the functionality to authenticate. We will just quickly link them to where they need to go. But you would do that in your project. So we know that it needs to say something like welcome and your username. So we could say this by CSS selector, 
and we're going to look for the H1, and we're going to grab its text. So we'll say welcome, and I'm going to assert that the welcome equals welcome Jeff Way. And by the way, this probably isn't a good idea. We're going to fix this in a minute, but I'll show you why it's not a good idea first. And we'll set the welcome. All right, so now when we submit the form, that should take us to a new page. And then we're going to hunt down the heading tag. We're going to grab its text, and we're going to make sure that it is equal to Welcome Jeff Way. All right, so we run it. That, of course, is going to fail. And now we will make it pass. So we'll create that admin.php. Once again, we're not working with a real project. We'll just do another snippet. And I'll paste in Welcome Jeff Way. So we run it again, and I think that should pass. Let's see, it's opening up Firefox, it's doing the tests. Nope, we did get a failing assertion. And this one looks like it's related to that first assertion that we ran, where we checked the action attribute, and we expected it to be admin, but it looks like it's adding on that full base URL. So why don't we do this? Why don't we just make sure that it contains that value? Do it one more time, and now I think that should pass. There we go, now we do have two passing tests. So now we do know that we have a working form. When you submit the form, it does link you to admin.php. But let's say down the line, maybe somebody from higher up says, rather than saying welcome and the username, we want it to say hello and the username. Well, that's fine. Your front-end guy makes that change, but then it does screw up all of your tests. You run it again, and then suddenly you get a failure because what you expected to be welcome turned out to be hello. All right, so there's a couple ways to deal with this. Usually, you just want to make sure that maybe a keyword is there. So the main keyword that I'm looking for is that it does have my username. So why don't we change all of this? And I just want to make sure that it does say my username at some point. All right, let's try it one more time. And now that should fix it. Regardless of whether we use welcome or hello as a greeting, it's still going to pass because it found that keyword. So let's write a couple more. What if we want to make sure that the submit button is disabled by default, and then we only enable it when both of the inputs are filled out? How would we write that? Well, let's scroll down, write another function, and we'll say test submit button is disabled until fields are filled. Okay, I'll hide the sidebar and scroll down just a few clicks. We begin by, once again, we set the URL to index.php, and how can we assert that the submit button is disabled by default? How would you do that? Well, if you want, pause and see if you can figure it out. Here's the way that I would do it. I'm going to assert false, in this case, that this, and we will go by name, or in this case, why don't we do by ID, because I believe, actually, our submit button doesn't have an ID, so we'll say submit. All right, so we'll say by ID, submit, and then we'll use this helper method enabled. So this is going to return a Boolean. We're going to look for a submit button, and the enabled will return true or false dependent upon is the input disabled, or does an attribute of disabled exist? Well, I'm going to assert that that is false because it should be disabled. So let's run this. And sure enough, that is failing. All right, so let's do one more test, though. I need a way to confirm that it is enabled. So we will say this by name, username, and I will fill that with a value. And we'll do the same thing we've already done this before, password. And we're going to fill that in with a fake password. All right, so now, as soon as those inputs are full, the submit button should be enabled, and we'd use JavaScript to do that. So you can see with Selenium, we can also test JavaScript, of course, and that's one of its main advantages. So now, we're going to take this assertion that we wrote before, but this time I'm going to assert true, because then it should be enabled. All right, we run the test one more time, but we know that's going to fail. And as we'd expect, it does. All right, so let's write the functionality to make this pass. Well, the first thing that I want to do is reference our JavaScript library that we're working with. This would probably be in a layout file if you're working with the framework, but we'll just embed it here. So now the first thing that we want to do is make sure, let's create a couple of variables. And um, we could use a framework like Backbone for this, but uh, let's just kind of do it manually here or procedurally. So I'll begin by doing the username, and we'll hunt down the, the input with an ID of username. And I'll duplicate that a couple times, and then we will do submit and password. So we know that immediately we want to set the attribute disabled on the submit button. 
And now we want to say, how can we listen for when the user types? Well, we could do something like this. Get input, and we'll say on key up. We'll run a function. And our simple test will be if username.val is not empty, or it's not falsy, and password.val is also not falsy, then we will remove the disabled attribute. Submit dot remove attribute disabled. All right, let's test this out in Selenium and see if it works. And great, three passing tests. So that was easy enough. So you might be wondering how come we didn't just immediately set disabled like so. And that's because if by some chance JavaScript is disabled, the user won't have the ability to submit the form. So that's why we use JavaScript to disable it. And we also use JavaScript to enable it. So let's just write a couple more. Maybe we want to make sure that your boss or the client says there needs to be options for signing up. They need to have some way to sign up. So let's make sure that a sign up link is available. We'll say test offer sign up link. I will set the URL and all I want to do is make sure that I find the text sign up somewhere. So I will do an assert regular expression. The pattern I'm looking for is sign up. So we'll do sign up and I'll make this space optional. Okay, the string, now how are we going to reference the entire page? Well, you can do it really easily. Just do this source. So that's going to return the source of the page. So we're just grabbing the source and making sure that we find the string sign up somewhere within there. We know that should fail and it does. All right, so now we would come back and I don't know, you would find some place to do it. I'm going to be really sloppy here and just say sign up. But that should be enough because when you run it again, it's going to pass. And now you know for the life of your project, there will be a sign up link on that form at all times or your test fails. And you never have to worry about somebody saying, I don't know how to sign up because you don't offer any links. Now, what if they say also, we need to have a sign up link, but we also need a forgot password link. Well, we could say sign up, let's just group them together and forgot password links. Now we're gonna do the same thing, but we will replace this with forgot password. Now I know that I need to go ahead and add that on. So forgot password. And if we run it again, that should work. But of course we're doing this at a very low level. You need to make sure that that actually works. So when they click on the forgot password link, are they able to successfully reset their password? And that would be something that you could code as well. It would just take too long to do this in a short screencast. So I think we're gonna stop it right there. We're running a little high on time, but the main things to know are the Selenium extension for PHP unit gives us an easy way to work with our pages. You can hunt by name, you could hunt by ID or by CSS selector, or you could even use XPath if you remember how to use that. You can even do things like by link text. So that would hunt down an anchor tag as long as it has the text that you specify. And then once you have the necessary values that you need, as long as you know regular PHP unit, you're good. Assert true, assert regex, assert false. All of that stuff will still work here. Now, if you'd like to learn more about the various methods that you use, I highly recommend just check out the test file for the PHP unit Selenium project on GitHub, which I will link to. And this will just have tons of tests that you can look over. So maybe you want to look for the link. How can I work with link? So link text, here we go. We test by link text, we set the URL. We look for a link that has the text, click here for the next page click it so that's one way that you could click on a link just call click on the element that you capture and then you can run assert equals you can also uh, accept an alert statement or dismiss an alert there's so many different things you can do here so if you're using php unit and selenium i would bookmark this page and come back to it whenever i need to and that does it for today i'm your host jeffrey way and for more tips and tutorials always visit nettuts